Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's enjoying the conference so far. There have been a lot of interesting talks, and I hope you, you enjoy this one just as well. Today, I'll be speaking about transformation of Tier 1, which is also known as Operation Center and NOC in different companies. Who am I? What qualifies me to talk about this topic? Why should you listen to me? I figure I should share something about myself first. I started my career as a Tier 1 engineer and then worked for seven years in different companies to gain more experience and seniority, companies like Microsoft and Yahoo. I then spent multiple years managing Tier 1. I have lived the life of Tier 1, and I know, I know how difficult it is to move up from there, to have a career path. In fact, I myself experienced the lack of growth of Tier 1, and I wanted to make a difference if I ever have a chance. When I joined LinkedIn, I knew I had the opportunity and the support to change that. For the past three years, we're making it happen at LinkedIn. I'm Nina Mushiana, currently managing NOC and SRE team at LinkedIn, and today I'm here to share my experience and journey of transforming Tier 1. In our discussion, we'll cover a few topics. We will talk about what is Tier 1, what value they provide in an organization, what issues, concerns, or roadblocks they're facing that's blocking their advancement, what is needed to change that current status, and most important, our vision, how we approach this challenge at LinkedIn. What is Tier 1? With the show of hands, how many of you have interacted with Tier 1? Almost all of you. And how many of you have evolved from Tier 1? Quite a few. Great, so most of you will be able to relate to this discussion. And for those who are not familiar with Tier 1, that is usually your 24 by 7 team that monitors the site. It's your first line of defense. They do the initial troubleshooting and triage, and if they're unable to resolve, they escalate to the higher tiers. Now let's talk about what value they provide. Why even have a Tier 1? Well, we need someone to monitor our site 24 by 7. We need someone that has eyes on our site. We all have incidents. We need someone to do incident management, and Tier 1 does that. They do alert management. And in some companies, they also do change management. But there's one thing that often not acknowledged for, and that is correlation. This team deals with large scope of services day in and day out, so they develop a wider understand understanding of all the services within, a, within the company. They become really good at correlating issues. They have seen various signals again and again, and they know when issues are related. They can see 10 issues and know that the one is the main cause of those issues. Even tools that are available today are not as good as that. Now I'll share a few of my real life experiences to show how NOC can be really good at correlation. My first example is a data center outage. A regular day in the NOC, and all of a sudden we had multiple services that were down. Multiple issues were reported. Each, all of the engineers were calling, but they were only aware of their own service being down. NOC had flood of alerts. Among this flood of alerts, it was one of the NOC engineers that realized that all of these services were located in the same data center. They made some phone calls and found out there was a power outage and the backup generator never kicked in. If you're wondering why I picked this image, the outage was caused by a squirrel that chewed through the power cable. Let's talk about another example. Another day in the NOC, we have alerts of service A, service B, and service C. And within minutes, again, we have hundreds of alerts. All engineers were calling, informing that the service is down and how it needs to be prioritized. And once again, they were unaware of other services that were also down and how they can be correlated. Among this flood of alerts, one of the NOC engineers saw that a load balancer was also down. And boom, that was a root cause. All three of these services were behind that load balancer. So did the NOC really resolve an issue? They did not. But they helped point the engineers in the right direction, helping them with the faster resolution of the issue. The reason I shared these examples was to show how tier one adds value in an organization, how they can be really good at certain skills that even they're, they're not even acknowledged for today. 
Now let's talk about problem at hand. As you see in this image, a robot is asking a human to continue to perform the same repetitious task that they've always performed. In my experience, that is exactly what we're asking our tier one. We hire intelligent individuals to monitor our site and then have them work on redundant tasks. They're busy in mindlessly executing documented processes or runbooks over and over again. Some of you will wonder, why not automate? We'll talk about that a little bit later in the discussion. This team has no time or motivation to understand the process that they're following. And since they don't understand the process, if the documented runbook doesn't resolve an issue, they end up escalating. Escalations, as all of you know, are associated with a problem or a bad news. Has anyone here ever received a call from the NOC informing you that your services are healthy? Oh, Brian has. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but mostly, this call will come at 2 a.m., waking you up, telling you you have an incident, your services are broken, now you need to wake up and fix it. It's not their fault. It's nature of their job. But they do feel the consequence of that. They're associated with the bad news. They feel lack of acknowledgement and respect. They're perceived as a team who only follows processes provided to them and then escalate. How can they earn the respect to advance in an organization? How can you promote such a team? A tier one engineer often feels stuck. They feel like they don't have a career path, and that leads to low morale of the team. Some may feel they're just a number. Ultimately, we end up with a team of intelligent individuals who are either disgruntled or unmotivated due to repetitious nature of their task and lack of acknowledgement. Lack of acknowledgement. Like oil in an engine, not particularly visible, but is required to run smoothly. This also has a negative impact on our culture and engineering overall. For example, Tier 1 teams doing repetitious tasks can hide software flaws that engineering owners can, can and should fix it. It doesn't encourage ownership. And its worst case could actually incentivize manual tasks versus automation. It causes dependency on Tier 1 to find flaws in your code. Teams that are asked to push a button to do their job are going to find a, find a way to push those buttons. Just like this image shows, Tier 1 makes a service appear healthy by restarting processes or doing this repetitious task, while a bigger issue is building underneath and is masked until it is too late. How can we change this? What is needed? We realize they're missing depth of knowledge and an opportunity to showcase their talent. In order to achieve this, they need time, experience, and mentorship. Time so they can learn new skills and improve on their existing skills. Experience to implement and execute those skills and innovate so they can be part of growth of the company that they work for, so they can be involved in the projects that their peers are working on. And mentorship, a program where they have someone to guide them to the next step, someone who will take them to the next level. Once we had these answers, our question was how? In, later part, in this discussion, I will talk about how LinkedIn did it. Our vision was simple. We wanted to build tools and automate known scenarios, something that we can document, let's automate that, and utilize our human resources for unknown scenarios. Uplevel our tier one so they can better drive and resolve side critical issues. Proactively analyze our growth metrics and ultimately, career transformation of tier one. We categorized our work. If it required simple escalation, we automated that via an escalation tool called IRIS. And if it requires validation and had steps for resolution, we automated that via our auto remediation engine called NURSE. In fact, our tier one was actively involved in that. They identified those runbooks. They're working with the SREs to write NURSE plans so they can automate those. Being that two of our homegrown tools, Nurse and Iris, have been the backbone of why this project has been so successful, 
I thought I might give you a little bit more details about each one of them. Let's start off with nurse. Nurse is a one-stop shop for all automation, information gathering, and remediation needed for LinkedIn engineering. It has the power of an SRE within LinkedIn system and infrastructure. It can trigger deployment, it can run salt commands, and is deeply integrated with our existing tooling, our ticketing, our auto escalation tools, our alerts. Few of the examples where we have used NURSE is to aggregate data for causing our 400 and 500 responses, something that our tier one used to do manually. Restart processes and subsystems. Restart debt services. Grabbing thread dumps and heap dumps so we can analyze data when we have incidents. Since we have launched NURSE last year, 854,000 actions have been taken. 100% of our service health check alerts have been fully automated. Approximately 37,000 man hours have been automated. And today, we're automating approximately 1,100 hours per week. And the engineer who led the effort of creating NURSE is right now sitting here among us. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> he says no. Now let's talk about Iris. Is anyone here familiar with PagerDuty? A lot of you. Uh, that's a great auto escalation tool. Well, Iris is our homegrown PagerDuty. This tool is integrated with our monitoring systems, and based on the predefined rules, it notifies the on call. When an alert triggers, it talks to Iris which then identifies the on-call and then engages them. On-call team can choose to either notify the entire team or just the on-call. They can even choose the method, an email notification for non-critical, and a page or a cell phone call for critical scenarios. In addition, this tool also allows to acknowledge an alert and trigger nurse plans via mobile devices. We wanted to ensure that all our automation tools are fully integrated so we can completely automate our workflow. Some of you might wonder if I've automated the knock and soon myself out of a job. But that's where we were different. LinkedIn has a culture of career transformation. That is one of our key values. I'll quote, helping people you manage build new abilities and skills, work with them to define their career goals, and support their efforts to accomplish them. Now let's talk about how we did it. We knew that the gap between our tier one and tier two was huge. We were committed to uplift our tier one, but we never wanted to compromise at the bar of our SREs. We wanted to maintain that bar. So we took a two-step approach. Our first program was SME program. That was to give them the depth of knowledge that they were missing. As the team had some time available due to automation, we used that time to provide project time, where tier one engineer will uplift their skills, improve their skills, and learn about the services that they were supporting. We adopted train the trainer concept, identified LinkedIn priorities, paired our senior engineers to those services. The goal was for them to focus on just that service, work with the engineers, gain the depth of knowledge, and then come back and train the rest of the team. This benefited both the tier one and respective SRE teams. They received a better dedicated service, and we uplifted our own technical skills. As the team improved their technical ability, they provided a higher level of support, and with that came the acknowledgement for the team and a morale boost. Now we had a team that was motivated to prove themselves, but we still needed to work on a career path. That's our step number two. We came up with a knock to SRE transition process. In this process, a tier one engineer was paired up with a mentor in the team that they were interested in. Together, mentor and the mentee sat together, evaluated the skills, and then came up with a detailed plan of how the tier one engineer can learn those skills. We wanted to make sure the program doesn't drag forever, so it has a fixed time frame of three to six months. We also wanted to ensure that we are fully committed to that, so tier one engineer was given a dedicated 20 to 40 percent of their time to spend with the team and work on the transition project. This program has regular check-ins, 
where the mentor and the mentee and managers of both the team will sit together, evaluate the progress, and if additional help was needed, that was given. At the end of three to six months, and upon successful completion of the transition project, tier one engineer transitioned as an SRE. This program has been really successful since we have launched it last year and adopted by various teams. We have had six transitions so far from tier one to SREs, with three are in the process. 25% of our team today works as SMEs, and the rest of the team is highly motivated and engaged in improving their processes. This team now build their own tools. They have recently created a tool that automates the reporting of incidents. They have also created a tool that identifies the alert noise. So they can address that, they can work with the SREs and see what's causing this noise. Can we fix it via automation tools or if there was a different problem that needs to be resolved? This team has also created a tool that tracks and reports all incidents and key metrics. We call it in panorama. It provides a panoramic view of site outages over a period of time. It provides trend analysis, mean time to resolve, root cause trends, issue detection trends, and team distribution of site outages. As I stated earlier, this team is really good in correlation, and they have used that knowledge and skill to build a tool that does correlation. We call it Invisualize. And visualize work by putting our alerting data across all teams into one visual display for an easy and quick bird's eye view of the entire infrastructure. This tool has the knowledge of all inter-service dependencies and their relative QPS strength in order to give a meaningful view of the impact and root cause. Visually, one would simply watch for the largest and the most orange or red lines that are all pointing to the same service and their downstreams. In this example, you see three front-ends that were all showing higher latencies to the mid-tier service, which was in turn having latency to a back-end database. This was quickly detected and escalated with a clear and concise knowledge of what the impact was and where the effort should be focused to resolve the issue. Oh, I'll go back. Sorry. There you go. In my opinion, we have made impossible possible. A team that was unmotivated and not acknowledged is today the team that's breeding ground of our SREs. They're actively engaged in providing key metrics and gaps in our systems to our executives and help them focus on key areas of improvement. There's a monthly ops review that's ran by tier one along with executives to discuss incident trends and gaps. There's an, another thing. Our CEO, Jeff, is known for his analysis of key metrics, key business metrics, such as invites, page views, reminders, and the trends. I love the fact he not only involves tier one, but now depends on us to identify and resolve any growth-related issues. This is a huge acknowledgement that he puts this much trust into our tier one. Auto remediation has impacted our cultural genome. LinkedIn's cultural has changed. Automation is now treated as a first-class citizen. More SRE time is spent primitively in solving problems and less time reacting. Getting tier one out of the loop of this basic task not only made their job better, it made our products more reliable. We incentivize better code opposed to incentivizing pushing buttons. With all these efforts, we have accomplished two things. First, we transformed our tier one by upleveling their skills and providing a career path. But there's another problem that all of us face in the industry today, and that's scalability. As you see in this graph, our alert numbers are growing every year, and the gap between the resources are increasing. We can't just throw bodies at a tier one at the pace that we are growing and adding infrastructure. And LinkedIn has resolved this challenge by automation, investing in upleveling a tier one, and a solid transition process that has been really effective. There's another thing I would like to point, that with successful automation, we no longer have the dependency on adding resources on a tier one. That work is now done by our, our automation. I will leave you with one last thought. Totem poles are part of the cultures of many indigenous people. 
Some may think that the top is where it shines the most, but in reality, it is the bottom that is the most important, being that is the base that holds the whole thing up. Any organization or company is just like that. It shines or grows if the foundation is strong, and a tier one is that foundation. In the end, this is definitely not the end. This is the beginning. As an engineer, we're never satisfied with a single solution. There's always a better way. And I look forward to having those discussions with all of you, with my peers in the industry, to, and together come up with the next step. Thank you. How have these changes affected your job descriptions for tier one and your hiring process or the success thereof? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? How have these changes affected the job descriptions for tier one and the success of your hiring process or the flow of your hiring process? So we have evolved our uh, definition of a tier one. In fact, we have recently done that. And now we're also in the process of changing the uh, titles of our tier one. And when it comes to hiring, like I said, six of the engineers have already transitioned as an SREs. And when SRE managers, when they're hiring, they're not looking for outside. They're looking at internally how to grow these people. Um, I'm sorry if you mentioned this the first few minutes, but it implied by your slides the time frame of these evolution and changes appears to be about the past two years. Is that right? That's right. OK, thank you. Any other question? Thank you, everyone. <laughs>